Welcome to this episode of Mo Money. I'm Alexander Palmaris, your host, and we have another exciting episode with Daryl Montgomery of the New York Investing Meetup. Again, he has about 1,200 members currently, and uh, they're all very interested to hear his unique insights and perspectives on the market and the economy. And in this episode, we're going to be discussing the uh, U.S. dollar and the connection to uh, inflation and the economy as well. It's a pleasure to have you back again. Thank Daryl. you for having me, Ali Brando. The important thing is to realize that the dollar is having a, a period of major, uh, major transition right now, and it's important to know how it affects uh, the economy and the markets. Uh, there's a lot of uh, um, sort of spin going around that it's not really that important or it really doesn't matter. No, they're it's, almost not even talking about it at this point. Uh, you find, in many cases, you find actually very little coverage in the U.S. media. You'll find enormous uh, coverage, however, in, in foreign media, in Europe and Asia particularly. We have to realize that the U.S. has a very large trade deficit, and that means we import much more than we export. And the bigger uh, an importer a country is compared to its exports, the stronger an impact of a drop in currency will have on the economy of that country. Actually, that should be a good thing for a country, right? Because then um, we'll be exporting more, people will want more of our goods, so our trade deficit should actually be reducing with a weaker currency. We should be really happy. That's what the, all the news media keeps telling us now, right? Yes, you will see that uh, in the press, uh, on TV, and, and in the financial press over and over again. It turns out if you actually look at two simple charts, one for the U.S. dollar and one for the trade deficit, you will find out this is not happening. And it has not been happening for quite some time. How does that make sense? You mean all the people in the media can't even look at a simple chart? I thought they're all experts. Well, I'm not going to presume where they're going wrong on this. Perhaps they have not even bothered to look at these charts. Perhaps they have, and they're simply not stating the obvious. Is that like a case of economic denial? No! Well, uh, perhaps if uh, we were in Egypt, that would be the case, Alexander. <laughs> but we're discussing the U.S. right now. According to classical economics, uh, what the people are saying in the media would be correct, that as your value of your currency goes down, it will reduce your trade deficits because your exports become much cheaper. However, this is simply not happening. Um, if you just look at a dollar chart, you will see the dollar has been going down since 2002. In fact, it's lost about 35% of its high in the, during the Bush administration so far. And we don't know where the bottom is going to be. And uh, you will see that the trade deficit at the same time has been growing uh, by leaps and bounds. Now, in theory, this cannot happen. However, it is happening in reality. How does that even materialize? I mean, it's just the statisticians and theorists can actually be wrong? Economics is the only career in the world where you can actually be wrong at every point in your life or during your job or tenure and still get promoted. Uh, you must be talking about Alan Greenspan. Uh, that would be another video, Alexander, or perhaps several, several videos. A uh, way to effectively support uh, currency is to raise interest rates. Now, the Fed has made clear not only is it not going to raise interest rates, but it's uh, lowered them significantly, and it looks like it's going to continue to do that. This will damage the dollar even more. Why don't they just stop printing so much money? Well, that would certainly be helpful, Alexander, but I doubt that they're going to do that either. The way one knows how much money has been created by the Fed is something called the M3 money supply. And uh, starting in 2006, they stopped publishing the figures. So no one actually knows how much this money supply is growing, which of course should make you suspicious immediately. So are there any other indications then that you could point out to that would suggest that the Fed's acting irresponsibly? There are certainly some. Uh, most commodities are priced in U.S. dollars, and if you look at uh, what happened to the CRB Commodity Index, which is a big basket of many, many commodities, it went up over 8% in the month of September because of the Fed rate cut. I mean, you could basically translate this into saying there's lots and lots of inflation, and the market is telegraphing this. That's unbelievable. It may be unbelievable, but unfortunately it's true, Alexander. Uh, and what we're going to see is as the dollar uh, drops and uh, the Fed has policy is ensuring that it continues to drop, and that also 
along with what the President and Congress are doing with the irresponsible spending, um, inflation is going to increase and economic growth is going to decrease. I mean, you may have heard the word stagflation in the media or read it in the press many times. This means high growth and high inflation. And that's actually an optimistic viewpoint. What is more likely to happen is we're going to have low growth and high inflation, which is the worst of both worlds. That actually brings up an interesting point, because I know we had discussed this um, earlier as well. One of my concerns, too, is it sort of puts you in a catch-22, because you're thinking if we're coming into some sort of a recession, that gold as well would take a hit in that whole process. But the way you're laying it out, we could actually have rising gold prices and a recession at the same time because of the way the Fed has sort of positioned the uh, monetary supply. Um, Alexander, that's highly, highly likely. If you go back and look at the 1970s, you would see there's a series of uh, recessions and there was enormous inflation. We're likely to actually have higher inflation this time. And the price of gold, which it, when it was um, depegged from the U.S. dollar, went from thirty-five dollars to uh, in the early seventies to about uh, eight fifty in nineteen eighty. And of course, that's when everyone started to listen and understand what was going on. But by then, it was pretty much the end of it. That's also why we're making these presentations so that you're not one of the last people buying gold. You have to start preparing now, not when everyone and your neighbor is talking about it. Yes, that's true. We, the time to act when inflation is involved is before it actually gets out of control. And there's a number of options. You know, gold is certainly a good one, but it's only one of them. Uh, but that's the subject of another video. On that note, we thank you again for your time and uh, your insights, and uh, we look forward to the next video now. Thank you, Alexander.